All right. Welcome. Welcome to a brand new video on the target individual program, the target individual experience. Um, what you see on the screen in this video, I know it's not like other videos I've done. And the reason why I'm doing this, because, um, you know, it's just like looking for topics and I came upon this article. Okay. And this article, it says, uh, congenital syphilis is on the rise and it has serious consequences for infants. Okay. So recently, um, this is actually yesterday, Wednesday, June 8th. And today is the 9th. It is, um, 3 15 AM in the morning, you know, so my insomnia, the constant remote no monitoring, the constant um, surveillance inside the home, whenever I touch things, whenever I, you know, go into the bathroom, um, there's police sirens, you know, and car honking. But they do it at a very subtle noise level, I should say. Okay. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I came upon this article and you know i'm doing this video not just for us as ti's but for people in general because i want you to understand that particularly within those of us within communities of color particularly the black community the communities where black people live uh one of the weapons that they use against us are stds all right <clears throat> and so i'm gonna get into a little bit about that all right because we know from the tuskegee experiments where they were giving syphilis to black men and telling them give you know giving them injections that it's supposed to be penicillin right but we're well, giving them a placebo which didn't do anything and they went on to infect other people right including their spouses okay so let's let's deal with this uh article and we'll read a little bit of it okay it says sexually transmission transmitted diseases stds are on the rise in the u.s which is news no one ever wants to hear case numbers are up for both gonorrhea and syphilis including congenital syphilis which is syphilis based syphilis pass onto a fetus before birth an area of particular concern the CDC reported the number of congenital syphilis tripled from 2016 to 2020, leaping from 641 confirmed cases in the U.S. to 2,148. Out of context, the number by themselves don't tell the full story. 2,148 is, after all, a fraction of the more than 3.6 million babies born in the U.S. in 2020. But the spikes has happened quickly and dramatically and the disease itself comes with the possibility of severe consequences including physical deformities and death the reason for the surge are complex and include issues of prenatal care access systemic racism and inadequate public health messaging rosalind uh, plotzer md mph an assistant professor at ucsf department of um, epidemiology and biostatistics says the disease itself can be addressed through fairly straightforward clinical measures but controlling the surge in congenital syphilis likely requires an approach as lays it causes so what is congenital syphilis and what are its symptoms congenital syphilis occurs when the fetus become infected with syphilis in Uthero, Dr. Pulser says, which happens when someone has syphilis during pregnancy and the bacteria is transmitted to the fetus via the placenta. The chance of a syphilis positive person passing it on to a fetus during pregnancy depends on the stage of syphilis and how long the person has lived with it. Researchers says that people with early stage syphilis are more likely to give birth to babies with congenital syphilis or experience a stillbirth 
than people with later stage syphilis who have had it for one or two years okay so people can have syphilis and not have any symptoms at all this is why it's important that every adult as well as every teenager okay should have an std particularly let me say this teenagers in general okay should be having an std test every three to four months especially if they're sexually active okay so that should be at least four times a year at least three or four times a year i should say for adults twice a year you know i usually get a scd test uh twice a year but i have that been intimate have not had sex in about going on what three years now okay so yeah all right and Anyways, let me let me uh, continue. So, congenital syphilis occurs when the fetus become. Uh, did I just read this? Yes, I did. Right. So, okay. Richard says that people with early stage syphilis are more likely to give birth to babies with congenital syphilis or experience stillbirth than people with later stage syphilis, who had it for one or two years. The consequences of congenital syphilis vary widely, but can be severe and life-threatening for the baby. Note that untreated late-stage syphilis can also be life-threatening in adults. Although it's rare, initial symptoms include uh, sores around the area of infection, such as the genital, and people with syphilis may later develop rashes, fever-like symptoms, and serious health problems, including blindness and paralysis. Prior to birth, possible consequences uh, of congenital syphilis include pregnancy loss or stillbirth, preterm birth, abnormalities within almost every organ system of the infant, including the liver, spleen, lungs, blood, central nervous system, including the brain, bones, and skin, example, rashes, rashes and lesions. With that said, most infants who are born with syphilis appear unaffected at birth, Dr. Uh, Plotzer notes, if left untreated, however, infants with congenital syphilis can develop severe abnormalities that may cause physical deformities, blindness, deafness, or death. That's why infants who are exposed to syphilis during pregnancy need to be tested at birth, even if they appear completely healthy and treated as needed, Dr. Pulser. Uh, Platzer uh, says the timing and types of symptoms vary among infants. Some may not test positive until several weeks after birth. So infants should have blood tests done every few weeks. Early signs includes blisters on the hands and feet, bloody or pus like leakage from the nose, rashes around the mouth, among the nose, mouth and uh, diaper area and swollen lymph nodes. All right, so I'm not going to get too much, uh, read too much more of this article, but understand that there is money to be made, right, in people getting STDs, okay? And if you think that the health department is going to eradicate STDs, particularly like, particularly even curable STDs like syphilis, uh, gonorrhea, you know, other forms of SCD that can be cured, then you're not paying attention. Okay. And you always got to look at the dollar signs. You always got to look at the, these pharmaceutical companies who make drugs to treat STDs, uh, you know, their bottom line every single year, their profit. Okay. So anyways, as I was, as I was, um, uh, reading this, okay, I posted it on Facebook because it's important that, you know, I posted various subjects, okay, because again, me being black and understanding that white supremacist war against us is multifaceted, multi-layered. There's many different components that are used, many different tactics, many different methods that are used to uh, destroy us 
as black people, okay? And to villainize us, all right? And like I said, uh, if you ever notice, whenever there's an outbreak of a STD within poor white communities, the, the uh, urgency of the state and the health department to curtail those infections, okay? So you'll see a mass drive to uh, test poor whites for STDs and to treat them. Whereas if there's if there are STD outbreaks in the black in the communities in where black people live, I'm not going to say black communities because people don't black people don't own the communities in which they live in. So in the communities where black people uh, live, okay, they don't do that. Okay, they they let the infection linger and goes on, goes on, go on. You know, they re, it's reported, but they don't particularly health facilities, particularly Department of Health. They don't see the, the urgency in curing black people of STDs, and that's just the facts. Okay, that is just the facts. And so what we'll have, we have uh, a rise in STD amounts, uh, black people, particularly younger black people, teenagers, young adults, um, from 25 to 35, you will see uh, they are the highest risk of um, infection, not the highest risk, but the, the highest number of infection, okay, of STDs amounts. Uh, the black population okay and there's a reason for that okay so i'm gonna move on to um another subject right because uh, again um and i'm gonna come back into this right because particularly um actually you know what let me let me continue with with this in in we're talking about another std so one of the other stds that i posted on uh facebook and i do this every year okay so i'm doing it now because when i pulled up this article started reading it i posted it and then i said what other stds is on the rise okay and then um i remember i was watching a news program and in the news program the news reporter said something about herpes and how uh, people getting infected with herpes could be a good thing. Okay, this is what they're they're saying. Now I was trying to find it on the internet, but couldn't find the um, any article on that. Okay, but I distinctly remember hearing that. And sometimes they'll use um, the media to say certain things, but then they don't, uh, and then they'll be like, after this commercial, then when they come back uh, to the commercial, they never uh, go on to that story, right? They completely ignore it, okay? Completely ignore it, right? And so they could be planting ideas into people's head who may have herpes to spread it, okay? So I want you to understand these things. So as TH, you have to be very careful. Again, in who you come in contact with. Okay. And understand that if you have an STD, if you're a TI, if you have, you know, an incurable STD, maybe, maybe herpes, AIDS or what have you, HIV, that they will, if they want to experiment you because you have those disease, they will do it. And they will manipulate you and brainwash you into spreading it and then villainize you. So you got to understand that. Okay. We cannot, they won't, they won't leave anything off of the table in order to save their necks. Okay. And to throw you under the bus because they don't want people to find out that they experimented on you. Understand that this is what they do. Okay. So, um, hurry out here. Okay, it's not one. I thought I pulled the article up. Let me let me find another article. 
Okay, so found the article. I thought I had um, pulled it up, but uh, apparently I didn't. So I, I had the link on Facebook, so I had to go to Facebook to, you know, pull up the article. So another STD, right? STD that has been on the rise and continue to rise is herpes. Now, there are many different forms of herpes virus. I think there were like about 100 different uh, herpes virus within that family, right? So there's a herpes uh, virus family, okay? Now you have uh, herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2. I think 1 is genital, 2 is... Well, it says both are known to cause uh, genital herpes. So let me just read. So how many people in the U.S. have herpes? Herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2 are both known to cause genital herpes. It is estimated that in the United States, 47.8% of people aged 14 to 49 have the, her the HSV-1, while 11.9% of Americans in the same age group have uh, HSV-2, according to the World Health Organization 2017. Theoretically, this means that over 195 million people in the United States might have genital herpes. So that's the that's the vast majority of Americans. OK, but we know the number might actually be somewhere lower than this. But how do you know that? OK, not every virus infection actually causes symptoms. And if it does. It isn't always in the genitals. Herpes can cause a latent infection, meaning the virus can lie dormant in your system without causing any symptoms. Because of this, not everybody who has herpes knows it, even though the Center for, uh, for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, estimated that there are around 776,000 new cases of genital herpes in the United States each year. OK, and this means our estimation of how many people are infected could be way off. So I want you how they word these things. OK, as I'm reading, what do they say? Right. I'm going to go back. Right. They said that. They know. They said, but we know the number might actually be somewhere lower than this. OK, so after saying that almost that's actually over 195 million people in the United States might have genital herpes. Then the next sentence, they say that, that they know that it's somewhere lower than this, right? Then, okay, the estimates that they give for yearly infection is 776,000 new cases of genital herpes in the U.S. And then they said this means our estimation of how many people are infected could be way off because you also had people who show no symptoms of infections though they can give you you an uh infect you with herpes but they may not be be you know to give symptoms and then maybe later on they will have symptoms okay or imagine this someone giving you herpes okay who have no symptoms you get an infection you tell them that you, they give you herpes because you haven't had it before and they'll tell you well, I, and they'll say well I don't have it because when you go to the doctor they don't if for STD tests they don't test you for herpes they'll do for other tests but they don't test you for that only if it shows up in your blood then they'll you know they may not even they'll, they'll tell you right or they won't tell you because again these type of experimentation still goes on you there are doctors who, so unless you get the paper yourself, normally you get an STD test, you know, sometimes you, you don't hear from the doctor, you call back, they'll tell you, um, well, if we don't call you, that means everything is good. But that's not always true. Okay? That is not always true. These people continue to experiment on us using many different tactics and many different methods. And this is something that we have to understand. And not just, I'm not talking about the black, black people here. I'm talking about people in general. And particularly if you live in a certain part of the country, 
certain population. Okay. And also when it comes to the black experience in America, and not just in America, but uh, in the diaspora around the world, these things happen all the time. These types of experiments happen all the time. And there's a reason for this. And I'm going to explain this in one of the articles that I'm going to read. Okay. So, again, we have to always be thinking when we start to see rise in STDs or new forms of stronger strains of STDs that are that is happening, right? And the infection of those stronger sh strains. Okay, a lot of these things are genetically modified. Okay genetically modify genetic modification of STDs to make them more resistance to certain uh, penicillin. Okay. And what does that mean for the bottom line of the pharmaceutical companies? It means that now they have to create a stronger uh, penicillin or whatever other, um, medicine they, they're used to cure the infection right and that means that they can charge you more money for that medicine remember we live in a capitalistic society okay so you can never put nothing past these uh white supremacists these capitalists okay um so as i posted i was posting these articles I get a friend request from Facebook. And this was, you know, around what time? It's been an hour now, so around two thirty-seven. Okay. And and I'm like, it's who the hell sent me a, a a message? Okay. So when I click on the person, I click on their their um, the name is the page web the Facebook page is. Uh, Tucci, which means I guess blue, okay. And again, they'll use colors to target you and stuff like that, you know, because I just find it very strange. And usually, when I post articles like this, I'm always getting friend requests afterwards, right? And it's usually people from Africa, so I'm saying to myself, you know, this person who sent me this request got to be from Africa, okay, got to be, All right? And again, this, these, you know, what. The United States and the Russia and Russia have been doing is paying people right in Africa to to cause um, you know to to post I would say propaganda lies false information okay and we got to be aware of this all right so of course when I if you click on about this person, you'll see uh, Inogu, Nigeria. I already knew it. I already knew it. So when you click on this person, okay, let's go to the video. It's a young kid, right? Well, not, not since he's a young kid, he's a young man, okay? But then I'm like, okay, yeah, got to be the religious. Got, because Nigeria, you know, they brainwashed and heavily indoctrinated. Uh, indoctrinated with Christianity okay and so I was like yeah okay <laughs> all right to so again you know got a picture, got a picture of Mercedes Benz airplane all this stuff, right? Again, paid bots with a whole bunch of pictures. Okay, it could be human bots. Okay, <laughs> it can. They certainly can be human bots. So I am going to. Um, I want to accept the, the the request because I love to engage with them particularly when I know that they're going to use them to target me and I want to see how they're going to target me. Okay. 
all right so anyway let's move on so then also i remember um someone i think it was dr umar johnson he was talking about the rise in herpes infection within the uh, lesbian community right lesbian and bisexual community and there are many women lesbians right are young women who think that if they are lesbians they can't get an an std okay many of them think and feel that way because they have been totally ignorant not being taught that yes even lesbian women Okay. Do get STDs. Just as heterosexual people do. Just as gay men do. Okay. So I am going to read some of this. So, um, and then this should, this shouldn't be a shocker, but it's just going to show you how ignorant that, you know, a lot of us are, <laughs> you know, and, um, this is something that, you know, needs to be talked about, which isn't again. And this is from the, this is from 2011. Okay. This is the clinical infectious disease, Oxford, uh, academics. Okay. So I try to do my, when I do my research, I pull up stuff that I do post things and talk about things from, uh, you know, sites that deal with these things whether it be through the, the NIH, which is the National Institute of Health, um, the, um, the government uh, health, health website, you know, the public health website and so forth, or the World Health uh, Organization, or s sites that deal with medical uh, journals and articles, you know, on facts, right? So, sexually transmitted infection amongst women who have sex with women. There's apparently a lot of women out there who think about having sex with other women that they can't get STDs. Okay? So, and particularly when you see the, the rise in uh, young black women who are now identified as uh, lesbians or bisexuals. Okay? So, women who have sex with women are a diverse group with variations in sexual identity, sexual behavior, sexual practices, and risk behaviors. WSW are at risk of acquiring bacterial, viral, and uh, protozoal sexually transmitted uh, infections, STIs, right? From current and prior partners, both male and female. Bacterial uh, vaginosis is common among women in general and even more so amongst women with female partners. WSW, again, that stands for women who have sex with other women, uh, should not be presumed to be at low or no risk for STDs based on sexual orientation. And reporting of same-sex behavior by women should not deter providers from considering and performing screening for STIs, including chlamydia, in their patient according to re the current guidelines. Effective delivery of sexual health service to WSW requires a comprehensive and open discussion of sexual and behavioral risk. Beyond sexual identity, between care providers and their female clients. Based on the 2002 National Survey for Family Growth, the NFFG, the National Represent Representative sampled a household uh, in the United States, 4.4% of women aged 15 to 44 uh, years reported having a female partner in the past 12 months and 1.3% report having exclusively female partners in the past 12 months using measures of both self-reported sexual identity and sexual behavior. It is estimated that 1.3 to 1.9% of U S women are lesbian and 
and that 3.1 to 4.8 are bisexuals. Lifetime same sex behavior is commonly reported by women in large population based survey, ranging from 11.2% of women in the 2002 NFG. NF NSFG to 7.1% of women in the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. Although extensive data are available regarding sexually transmitted infection STI among men who have sex with men, relatively little has been published about STI prevalence and risk among other sexual and gender minorities, including women who have sex with women. And there's a reason why these things are unreported. There's a reason why they don't have uh, studies is because again, uh, the spreading of STDs is big business for pharmaceutical. Okay. And we are conditioned program to do that. And not just that, but there is the covert tactics and method in which is used to hide or not test people who are particularly women who are in same sex relationship, who are having threesomes and foursomes and sex parties with other female, what they call um, uh, toys, sexual toy uh, parties where they where they bring out a whole host of sex toys and use them on each other. You know, maybe somebody's selling them and sometimes they're not, there's drinking involved. They're not taking precaution or what have you, or they're taking precaution, but doing having sex, you know, things may happen, right? Maybe, um, the, you know, putting their hands inside of each other and then going to another person and doing the same thing. Okay, so all these things are part of the reason. Okay, and the fact that they don't talk about the spreading of STDs, particularly among women who have sex with other women. Okay, which put them at a bigger risk of contracting STDs like syphilis, uh, gonorrhea, herpes, um, vaginosis. Uh, chlamydia and other host of STDs. Okay. Uh, HPV and such. Okay. So the results, let's go about the results. What is known about the current epido epi epidemiology of STIs among SWS chlamydia, uh, Trachomitis and uh, Neisseria gonorrhea. I guess this must be the the proper medical term. Infection among WSW have been considered uncommon. Now, why would it be considered uncommon? Okay, earlier studies that include women from STD clinics and sexual health centers reported a prevalence of chlamydia infection among S. I mean, WSW ranging from 0.6% to 3% and of gonorrhea from 0.3% uh, to 2.8%. However, no data on C. Uh, trichomitis or N. gonorrhea infection in WSW from community base or population. Base venues are available and in 2008, uh, Singh et al. examined chlamydia positivity among WSW age 15 to 24 years tested at family planning clinics participate in the infertility prevention project in the Northwestern uh, United States from 1997 to 2005. WSW and women who have sex with both men and women right? This is S W S M W in the 12 months prior to testing were included. So now you have people who are bisexual. So you have women having sex with men and then they go have sex with other women and also infecting them, right? If they got an STD infection and I understand is that more women 
more women give men STDs than men give women STDs. Okay. And again, this is a lie they've been, well, the lie that they've been, the talking points, right, of, of how they try to get women to, like women can't do no wrong. It's only men. So again, when the facts are that more women give men STDs than men give women STDs, they don't talk about these things. They will focus on men giving women STDs. All right. I understand the gender wars. They are the ones that are creating the gender wars. And it's funny because, you know, you have these uh, women feminists, these women feminists who think that that they are in control of the feminist movement, but they're not. OK, it is the corporations, the white corporations that are in control of the feminist movement who uses white women, that corporate wife whose husband is the CEO or um, uh, the um, the shareholders who's who who wives are white they're the one that are leading the so-called feminist movement but it is a try to find a word here um it is a trick okay so they send these women out you know they empower women but really they're not really empowering the majority of women okay only a selective few and then putting their faces out there to make it seem like they're really empowering women, but they're not. Understand the trick. You know, uh, there was an article written by, um, I forgot her name, but she was a writer, uh, editor, I think, for one of these, uh, for Cosmos. And she later on, she came out and she's like, a lot of the stories that we wrote in Cosmos were all lies to sell products. Right. So they will lie to you. They lie to us men. They lie to men. They lie to women. But right now, women are their biggest source of income. OK, this is why, particularly in the black community, right, where you see. The, which is one of the reasons for why supremacist intervention within the family and the family breakup by doing certain things for black women. OK to give them that mentality, this um, egotistical way of thinking, you know? So you hear black women say, well, black women run the world. How you run the world? How you run the world? It's still a man's world. So how you run in the world? So you have women, black women going on saying all of this stuff without even understanding and realizing that no, no, they don't. Okay. And then you start to see more negativity in terms of how they are using black women to promote this hypersexual uh way of being that's what they used to say about us black men that's what they try to villainize us and turn us into but like i said eventually black women are gonna have to understand that they are being tricked and i just hope it's not too late for them to come to that realization okay so anyway let me continue you know so other uh, STIs can be passed between female partners, including trichomyosis, syphilis, and hepatitis A. Although it is presumably rare, sexual transmission of human uh, immuno, immuno uh, deficiency virus, the H HIV, may also occur in this manner. Prior data suggests suggesting potential HIV transmission between female partners based on case report where presumed female to female transmission was based on the lack of other identifiable risk factor. A survey of 960,000 female blood donors failed to identify any HIV infected women who identified same sex contact as their sole risk factor. Similar results were seen in a much smaller survey of lesbian and bisexual women. And again, but this is 2003. Okay. And, you know, when you look for information up to date, you know, they always go back to uh, older studies. All right. And so this is why, um, you know, I was able to find this. All right. From the, again, this is the, the Oxford, um, uh, the Oxford Academy. Academy okay. So, 
Okay, now, let me just... This is a pretty extensive article, so I don't want to go through all of this, right? Uh, so, vi viral STI including herpes simplex virus type 1 and 2 and human... Uh, I know how to pronounce this, <laughs> but I just can't right now. HPV occur in women who have sex with women data from 2002 NSFG we used to examine self-reported virus STI among women aged 15 to 44 years old a history of genital herpes or genital words was reported more frequently by bisexual women right so 15 percent to 17.2 percent than by lesbians women who just do the one have sex with women okay which is 2.3 percent to 6.7 percent and their heterosexual counterpart right so again the heterosexual counterpart 8.7 to 10 percent so bisexual women are the ones who are most frequently to have the herpes virus okay and if they're bisexuals meaning that they're passing it on to men and women okay so again um you guys can read this i'm not gonna go into all of this right now but i really wanted to um you know talk about this right you ask it this is from november uh, 16 2021 20, you ask it do lesbian get stis so even in 2021 right there are people out there who are still asking whether lesbians can uh, get STIs. And the answer is, yes, they sure can. Okay? So, again, I, I really have to shake my head on this because, um, you know, they can get it from not just, but if, you, if, if they don't take care of their, you know, uh, genital areas properly, if they're using toys okay if they're um particularly you know if also uh yeast infection so if they're not wearing uh the proper underwear or if they're eating too much sugar stuff like that right will give them yeast infections and if they have a mild yeast infection they may not even you know and i trust me they have women out there who have yeast infection that you know it's like they can't even smell the shit so that's just you know again it's how they grow up and and what activity and their awareness of it the people around them their parents have their parents talk to them about the truth talk to them about it and usually within the religious communities particularly christianity you will find that most people who are who are tested positive for stds and particularly you know uh syphilis gonorrhea herpes hiv are Christians okay so and that's a fact all right so it says right uh, some of ST, STIs can be transmitted through skin-to-skin -skin contact and they are still often and they are still often bodily fluids involved in sex between two people who have vaginas the risk of STIs is generally low with sex between two people with vaginas but they are still a risk but again, see, when they say this, they're being disingenuous. Okay? Because they didn't say only. They just said two people with vaginas. And I just told you guys from the other article that women who identified as bisexual, okay, they are at higher risk of having an STDs and transmitted to both men and women. Okay, so the only way to be 100% safe is to not have partner sex. If when you decide you want to have sex, it is important to understand how to effectively reduce your risk. Different sex acts carry different risks. Below, we talk through what you should know about different sex acts and how to make them safely. And I'm not going to go through all of this stuff, but, you know, talk about oral sex. Um, hold on here. My
Give me a second here. I got to plug in my. It's it because uh, all right, so okay, so um, and then they talk about uh, not too many couples use dent dental dam, okay, um, also uh, manual sex, fingering, so unprotected. Manual sex has a fairly low risk of STI, but you can still potentially get chlamydia, syphilis, herpes, HPVs, or genital works. Okay, so all these things. Sex toys, I've talked about strap on, uh, tribbing, using your genitals together without clothes, right? Which again, tribbing puts you and your partner at risk of chlamydia, gonorrhea, herpes, pelvis, inflammatory disease, public lice trichomonosis and HPV. They are also low risk for HIV if fluids are involved. Okay, so if fluids are involved, why is there a low risk of HIV? Okay, or uh, one or both of you has cuts which you can get from shaving or j just friction. So how is there a low risk? Again, when we read these things, we have to read them and understand and ask ourselves these questions, right? when it shouldn't be a low risk okay so um all right so let's let's let me move on from here so one of the trends uh particularly being a black person um being a black man and and understanding how the experiment in us and all these other things so i came upon this article it was a while back right but this article is Again, this is written 2022. I couldn't find the original article um, that was written a couple of years ago. This was a couple of years ago. Okay, so this is not new. You know, and usually, like I said, when things disappear off the internet, it's because they're trying to go dark. They're trying to hide things uh, so that people like me who understand the programming, who understand a lot of the methods and tactics used by white supremacists and, and their war against black people will not be able to share with other people. All right. So harnessing the power, hunt, sorry, harnessing the herpes virus to beat a deadly brain cancer. Now, when I read an article like this a couple of years ago, um, it wasn't talking about uh, cancer, you know, because they always got to try to put this positive spin on it, right? To 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 distract you to say, oh, OK, yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. Right. But see, the article that I read prior like I said a few years ago, wasn't talking about this though. It was talking about how to introduce new viruses to the brain. Because what they found is that when they want to infect the brain with a virus, the brain defense system will kill the virus. So what they do is that they hijack the herpes virus. Okay, they hijack it. And what they do is that they use it as a carrier to carry other viruses to the brain. Therefore, the brain defense system does not kill that virus. And then once that virus, you know, it's basically genetic modification of the herpes virus to introduce new viruses into the brain. Okay. And I'm going to try to find an article because I've been looking and I couldn't find it, you know. Like I said, I'm, my short term memory might be shot sometimes when they've, I'm being heavily remotely new monitored or heavily attacked with the psyops. But my sh my long term uh, memory, you know, it's a lot better. It's not great, but it's a lot better. OK, so a genetically modified herpes virus appears to deliver a one two punch to a rare and deadly form of brain cancer that killed U.S. Senator John McHale. New finding shows. Uh, Geoblast uh, tumor brain tumors are a cancer nightmare with an average survival rate of 12 to 15 months uh, from initial diagnosis and four to six months after reoccurrence, researchers said. McCain died in August 2018, one year after doctors discovered he had an aggressive cancer. 
Despite 50 to 60 years of research and advance in surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation, we haven't pushed the needle much at all in terms of survival, said senior researcher Dr. James Marker, chairman of neurosurgery at the University of Alabama at Bigginham Hair Sink School of Medicine. Only 5 to 10 percent of patients live longer than five years. It's usually almost universally fatal. Okay. So, um, but an experimental cancer fighting herpes simplest barracks called G207 has shown promise to fight uh, glioblastoma, and a paper published February 1st in clinical cancer research provide a better idea how. It's been known that G207 directly attack and kills brain tumor cells, Marquette says. There's something different about tumor cells uh, defense against viruses so that the change in the DNA that kept the virus from being infectious in normal human cells weren't present in the tumor cells, he said. As a result, the virus becomes selective for infecting and killing tumor cells. It turns out the virus has another trick up its sleeve. It robs uh, geoblastoma of its ability to evade detection by the immune system. Highlighted by the virus, the brain cancer comes under attack from the body's natural defense defenses. It became apparent to us there was a really one-two punch market that the virus was invoking an immune response against the, against the tumor as a secondary kind of anti-tumor response produced by the infection. Results from phase 1b clinical trial involved six adults uh, glioblastoma patient with reoccurring or progressing tumor provided market and his team with a new understanding of how to modify herpes virus uh, attacks um, the cancer so they can modify herpes virus to do whatever they wanted to do okay so imagine now creating biological agents of mind control okay or to attack certain parts of the human brain okay like i said if you want to look for these racist white supremacists Dr. Peter Bragan says it best. The very same people that we that are in positions to which can affect our lives, okay, are the ones that we give awards to. You know, we praise, we celebrate, are the ones that are committing the most evil. Okay? So, um, you know, just, just wanted to do this because again, like I said, whenever I read certain articles, you know, I post it all of a sudden, you know, they'll always send me these friend requests from these people from Nigeria. Okay. <laughs> it's like Nigeria is a, is, is the country in which most of these human bots are. Okay. It's like an army of them and they get online they get on social media and manipulate people's emotion, manipulate people's feelings. <clears throat> Excuse me. And to their use in the psyops, psychological warfare against uh, target individuals also. So we can't forget that. And also, before I uh, uh, end this video, I want to talk about the particularly the shifting of sexual identities, particularly within black women. Okay. 
more younger black women today are identifying as bisexuals. See, there's a reason why I wrote, I read those articles, okay? There's a reason why. Because you see, when you can see the enemy's tactics, when your mind has been opened to the truth, okay? When they attack you because they want to silence you, when they spread their rumors, okay, when they get their snitches to lie, to try to villainize you, okay, when they go around spreading their rumors, it is because they don't want to give you a chance to defend yourself. It is because they think that they can shut you up, okay? When they try to promise me money, okay, for being silent, promise me women for being silent, and I said, no, mm. it's not going to happen. <clears throat> so, remember I talked about that it is women who identify as bisexuals. They are the ones who are spreading STDs amongst women the most and men. Okay, so last spring, one of us was talking to a heterosexual African-American male who said he seemed he's been surprised to learn that his niece, Amani, whom he believed to be straight, was thinking of inviting a girl to the prom. Amani did not identify as lesbian, but hinted that she might be bi. Her uncle wondered whether Amani had always felt she was LGB or whether her declaration was part of some new trend amongst young people, perhaps thinking outside the, outside the box when it comes, when it came to their sexualities. And you see in America, the elites, okay, now I'm, I'm a liberal, I'll tell you that, but I do have some conservativeness. I do have some old fashionedness, which I like, you know, uh, I'm more of a, of a liberal though. OK. And when I start to see again, knowing what I know and the research that I've done and understanding that, you know, they have done experiments and where they can make people change their sexual uh, preferences. OK. And then I see over the past two decades, you have this huge increase, particularly among black young black women who identify themselves as bisexual. Not also that, but you see that it's being promoted in the videos, particularly in the rap videos, right? And for the most part, it is the female rappers who are promoting these kind of sexual behaviors, okay? Not to say the male rappers don't do it, but the female, the black female rappers are doing it more and promoting that sexual lifestyle, Okay? So, indeed, Amani is a is among a growing number of young women of color who self-identify as bisexual or lesbian. But what this trend means for her and other women like her is complicated by how sociologists often measure and make sense of sexual minority identities. Consider a question that sounds deceptive, sim deceptively simple, but has motivated a great deal of scholarship. How many gay, lesbian, and bisexual people are there in the United States? Estimating the size of sexual minority pop population is challenging for a collection of reasons re related to uh, Amani's statement. Where does Amani fit in the current social landscape of sexual identity? Would everyone encounter her story understand understand her sexuality in the same way how will Amani ultimately decide to sexual identity and will that identity stick or may continue to change over the course of her lifetime okay so what they are what they are doing is causing confusion and using 
pleasure, sexual pleasure as a means of changing people's sexual identities or sexual preferences, okay, because of the pleasure. So I've, again, showed you research and how one of the things that these neurologists, scientists have been doing over the past 70 years is experimenting with people's pleasure sensors, their erogenous zones. Okay. Also, we start to see a large increase. I'm just not in the article now, but during the early 2000s of black men also identifying as bisexual, uh, bisexuals. And uh, this is where you get the down low brothers from because a lot of them are leading double lives. Okay. And I talk about technologies in which the human brainwave can be altered. Talk about silent sound, microwave radio frequencies. Okay. So, um, in a 2017 essay in context, Amin uh, Ga Gaziani explored the issue and difficult of measuring sexuality and who to count as gay, straight, or anything else. Studying sexual sexuality demographically depends on your ability to extract information from respondent that some may not want to share. We can ask survey questions about dimension of sexuality. And when we do receive widely different estimates, sometimes this has to do with how sexuality is being defined. Sexuality or uh, sexualities are composed of, among other things, desire, act or behavior and identities. And while one might expect people's sexual desire to influence their sexual behavior and the sexual identity they claim. The, so the sociological fact of the matter is that these dimensions do not always line up neatly as research since uh, Lugman, uh, Gannon, Michael and Michaels, the social orientation organization of sexuality has borne out. People may engage in sexual practice at odds with their sexual desire or lay claim to sexual identities that do not reflect their sexual practices. Now, doesn't that sound like confusion to you? Okay. And not everyone understands sexuality and their own sexuality in particular the same way. Sexualities are far more flexible than we often embrace. See, for instance, uh, Lisa Diamond, sexual fluidity, and the Jane and the Jane Ward not gay. See, this is again what I call bullshit because this is what they're pushing the sexual uh, fluidity bullshit, right? Oh, I don't identify as straight. I don't identify as bisexual. I don't identify as gay. I identify as me. Okay, and I can have sex with whoever I want, whenever I want. It could be a man, a woman. It could be a animal okay and we see that this is being pushed more and more within the black communities in which black people live in particularly amongst young black women okay so yeah um so let's look at see who identifies as straight gay or bisexuals right so the gender social survey that include included a question about sexual identity since 2008, asking respondents to classify themselves as gay, lesbian, homosexual, bisexual, heterosexual, or straight, or don't know. Between 2008 and 2016, those identify as lesbian, gay, or bisexual rose from 2.8% to 5.8%, a 100% increase in just eight years. Distribution within these identities have changed too. In 2008, more people were identifying as lesbian or gay 
1.6% than as bisexual, 1.1%. By 2016, bisexual has become the more prevalent sexual minority identity at 3% of respondents compared to 2.4% identified as lesbian or gay. So we can see there's a rise, okay, from 2008 going up past 2016 of women who identify themselves as bisexual. Gay men, okay, we see that it was a dip and then there was an increase and then this is a steady line, okay, with a slight incline, okay. Bisexual men, again, you have a rise from 2010, 2012, and then you have, again, a slight incline going beyond 2016. And women who describe themselves as lesbians, okay, as you can see from 2014 to 2016, there was a rise, but that tapered off along the same line with gay men okay so when you look you'll see that bisexual women sharp incre increase gay men as well as lesbian women from 2016 has relatively remained stable okay and bisexual men has not in increased from since 2012 going to 2016 well a very slight increase Okay, so the shift, the greatest shift occurs among women identified as bisexual. The figure above reveals shift among lesbian women, gay men, and bisexual men alongside bisexual women. Between 2008 and 2016, the percentage of women classified at themselves as bisexual more than doubled from 1.5 to 3.9 percent bisexual woman represents the largest change in sexual identification over time and amongst women bisexual is now a more prevalent identity than lesbian among men however bisexual is less popular as a sexual identity than gay this is important because as Delaine Compton, Nicole Ferris, and Yu Ting Chang showed in a 2015 article as a sexual identity category, bisexual is often present as more uh, nebulous than lesbian, gay, or straight classification. So let's look at the age group. Women and men aged 18 to 35, identifying as lesbian, gay, or uh, bisexual, 2008 to 2016. And you'll see here, again, bisexual women, again, on the rise. So between those ages of 18 to 34 is where women has been identifying as bisexual okay and that is important particularly within the black population where 20 23 percent of young black women identify as bisexuals that's a huge chunk of the female population within the black in communities in which black people live Okay. This is why you start to see a huge shift in the mentality of black women attitudes towards men. Okay. Because they now are so sexually liberated, more so than white women. You know, we used to say white women are the most sexually liberated women, but that's not the truth. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys the facts. <laughs> okay, so again, we talk about that. It says in the next figure shows that the change in women 
bisexual identities is largest among youngest age group which as Amani uncle suggests is also the group for whom sexual minority statuses more, ge more generally are the most common between 2008 and 2016 the proportion of 18 to 34 year old identifying as lesbians or gay increased modesty from two to, from 2.7 to 3.0 over the same period the proportion of these young American identifying as bisexual double from 2000 from 2.6 percent to 5.3 percent and broken down by gender the proportion of women in this age group identifying as lesbian actually declined from 3.4 percent to three percent while a proportion identifying as bisexual more than doubled from 3.5 percent to eight percent in the same period among this age group there are almost as many bisexual identifying women as there are gay men bisexual men and lesbian women combined okay so the largest group of people right in terms of sexual preferences and sexual identity are bisexual women okay aside from heterosexual male and heterosexual female okay i'm talking about the lgbtq community okay so we can further comprehend the complexity of shift in the LGB population than when we consider race. While many, and this is important now, if you're a black person, you need to listen, listen, listen up really well. While many survey find no statistically uh, significant difference in the racial ethnic composition of LGB adults and non-LGB adults, one of the largest national Representative, representative survey collected by Gallup and analyzed by Gary T. Gates in 2014 reported that LGBT adults were less likely to be white when compared to when compared with so again so it says LGBT adults were less likely to be white when compared to non-LGBT population. Consistent with the GSS data presented here, GAGE shows larger differences by race amongst young people. Whether this is a cohort or period effect is not clear. Now, let's look at this. Women age 18 to 34 identifying as lesbians or bisexual by race from 2008 2016 so the darker blue is lesbians and the lighter blue is bisexual okay so in 2008 whites right you see that um in terms of percentage so you have about uh four and about a little more than a half so i would say four point six all right of white women between the age of 18 to 34 identify as lesbians whereas five percent of that same group uh, identify as bisexual same year black women you have there are about seven, a little over seven percent identify as gay, but then you have almost fifteen percent identified as bisexuals. Others, other groups, about twelve percent. Sorry, not twelve percent, about um, seven percent. Okay, or six percent, depending on how you're looking at it. Two thousand and ten. Now watch this. In 2010, we start to see a shift where white women 
now about about almost three percent okay identify as lesbian but about seven and a half percent now identified as bisexual others you see a sharp decline where it's about i would say four percent or close to four percent okay now 2012 white women who identify as lesbians about one percent but then you still also also see a slight drop in the percentage of white women who consider themselves to be bisexuals right so you talk about about a six percent right or almost seven percent okay for Two thousand and twelve again. Black women, you don't see any within the survey who identified as lesbian. Okay, and then also you you see a decline. Okay, in identification of bisexual by like four puts almost four percent and others again down about two percent 2014 white women identify as lesbians about four percent identified bisexual shoots up to you about almost 13 percent Black women identified as lesbians, about slightly more than 2%. As bisexual, about 4%, a little bit more than 4 Others, again, you see a increase. Okay, now here's the thing. Here's the shocker, 2016. White women, all and steady at about 4%. Okay, actually uh, 3%. Identified bisexual, about 9%. 2016, black women between the age of 18 to 34. We got about, about 12% identified as lesbians. But now they are almost 20%, about 18% or 19% identified as bisexual. And others, again, you start to see arise in that okay so these are just surveys that are taken right but it can give you an overall picture of what is happening okay so you start to see the rise of music videos involving particularly uh black female artists promoting same uh you know sex relationship you know threesomes bisexual relationships stuff like that in the videos okay now these are the the for male so again they've been pretty steady but what we do see more so is a rise in young black women identifying as bisexual so so now it's about 23 percent and possibly even more okay so when i talk about the research that i've done particularly dr jose delgado dr robert heat and you know dr robert heat was doing this gay conversion thing but he was also doing an experiment on black people to make them gay okay same thing with dr jose delgado in which he used radio wave frequency to manipulate the mind of a 12 year old child to make that child think that he was gay and to change his preference to being gay and being attracted to men 
Okay? The research is out there. So when I talk about the war on black people, like I'm talking about this, it's multifaceted in many, many ways. And this is what we have to understand. Okay. And as TIs understand that, you know, they using this technology on us, they, they use the gay theme on me. Didn't work because I was doing the research and I understand what these technologies can do. And I become so much aware of it. So it becomes harder for them to manipulate me in that aspect. Okay. So just wanted to, um, talk about this. Cause again, you know, whenever they do certain things, whenever I'm reading certain articles and they started with the target and I just, I'm zoned, I'm zo I'm so zoned in. This is why, you know, I'm doing this. It is after four in the morning, like four thirty six AM. Okay. And like I said, when they target me in this matter, you know, I got to expose a lot of things that they do. Okay. It was like, they awaken something in me, you know, to, to go, to find the information, to talk about it. And like I said, let them keep targeting me. It's okay. Because th their targeting fuels my fire to expose them and to make sure that they don't do this to anybody else. I have to make enough people aware. Though they may, they keep sending me some little message about how they, they've silenced me and all this stuff. Whatever. I'm still talking. So you haven't silenced me. Okay? Alright, with that being said, I'll speak to you guys in the next video.